It's good, y'all. Welcome back to Niner Wire. I'm your host, Sam. Today, we are here to break down the blueprint for the draft. We are two days away, guys. Less than 48 hours. I am so excited for the draft. Yeah, stream yesterday about the draft. You're getting a stream today about the draft. This is going to be a bit more Niners focused, unlike yesterday. Today, we're going to be talking about the blueprints for the draft. Obviously, round one, I think we all know we're taking a quarterback. So let's talk about the later rounds, rounds two through seven, day two, day three. Let's talk about the blueprint for that because that's all up in the air right now, as well as the quarterback. But we have a better idea about that. So for this stream, I have three very special guests on. Haven't been on my channel before, but I've worked with these guys. Really looking forward to this. We got Bay Area Baller 18, Jesse from Last Second Sports, and Ben Meyerson. Guys, how are you all doing tonight? What's up, Sam? <laughs> good man i'm i'm hyped i'm as hyped as you right now man i'm really looking forward to this listen bay is always gonna bring the energy so absolutely i will put bay. my my thoughts into his energy and that's how excited i am <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh I'm, I'm really excited for the draft too i'm just you know i think i'm i'm at that point where i'm like wow we're, we're finally here we can get this over with we've been talking about it for so long and now we finally get to find out what happens so I, i'm just excited that we're almost there yeah. Yeah, man. 48 hours. It's so close, to, less than 48 hours, I should say. We're so close to the draft. I'm so hyped for this. We've been talking about this for a month. So I'm ready to get into it. But before, before we do, guys, I want you all to introduce yourself. We'll start off with Eric right here. Tell, tell the viewers a bit about yourself, where they can find you. Where they can find you right here, but tell, tell them a bit about yourself right, real quick. Hey, Sam. Bay Area Baller 18 on YouTube and Bay Area Baller 18 on Twitter. I'm excited. I've about speculated my brains out on who we're going to pick. So I'm excited to dive a little deeper and go in depth on the draft. There we go. Can't go wrong there. Jesse, what about you? Where can people find you? A bit about yourself. Tell the viewers. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at JNA underscore LSS. And you can find me on YouTube, Last Second Sports. About three months into this thing. Very excited of how the channel is going. We do pretty much all sports, mainly football, but a little bit of everything. And of course, I represent the Niners on the show. So that's where it's at. Appreciate you having me on, bud. Yeah, absolutely. Always great to have you on, get to work with you. And Ben, last but not least, what about you? Where can people find you? Tell the viewers a bit about yourself. Yeah, so you can find me on Twitter. That's probably where I'm the most active. And it's uh, a lot of speculation, a lot of sarcasm. And, uh, you know, I just enjoy being a Niners fan to the fullest extent. Um, but I, I'm also a reporter. I uh, work for a uh, local student newspaper here in Tallahassee. I go to FSU and I report on Florida State sports, which I'm hoping can get me an in with uh, maybe some potential future 49ers. But I'm sure we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm going to be covering the draft and I'm going to be doing a lot of 49ers coverage this summer. So everyone can be excited to check that out. Oh, absolutely. Three very different channels here. Mine included. I mean, all of our channels are very different, so make sure to check those out. Those three are in the description. You guys are obviously on my channel right now. Speaking of me, I'll just let you know where to find me real quick. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Ninerwire Sam. If you guys are watching on Twitter, my YouTube is Ninerwire. I post a lot of stuff on both of those platforms, so make sure to check that out. Also, got to check out the Talking Niners pod. We're doing a live show tomorrow on our YouTube channel, Talking Niners. Follow us on Twitter at Talking Niners Pod. And as always, if you got any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, make sure to leave them in the live chat, wherever it is on your screen. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So, Starting off with stuff, you could call it draft stuff, you could call it not draft stuff. I want to hear your guys' thoughts on the presser yesterday. That was a presser yesterday, 1230. Lots of people on Twitter during then tweeting about what they thought about it. Whoever wants to start off, go right ahead. What are your thoughts on the presser? What are some of the big takeaways you got? Well, go ahead, Eric. Or Ben, doesn't well, matter. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say, I think the first thing that jumps out to me <laughs> immediately is that... Uh, First of all, Kyle Shanahan does not like working with Jimmy Garoppolo. I, I think that's been clear, but it became pretty evident when you had that quote about uh, when someone asked him if he was going to be on the roster, he said, I don't know who's going to be alive on Sunday. To me, that that kind of that kind of tells you where things are headed with, with that situation. But uh, overall, I, I, I don't think we learn much because I think Kyle wants it to be that way, and I think he's honestly having a lot of fun with it right now. And I think the interesting thing that everyone should be paying attention to is that Kyle last minute was inserted into this press conference. It's not a normal thing for head coaches to do. Usually this press conference every single year for most teams, almost 32 out of 32 teams will have just the GM. So I thought that was really interesting from that aspect. 
And uh, I thought, you know, I, I don't think we learned a lot. I, I just think Kyle was having a lot of fun with the media. Um, we did hear about Mike McGlinchey's fifth year option. So I guess that's nice. <laughs> shout but, out to Grant on that one. That really, shout out to Grant for that. That was shout really the Grant. only fact that was given on that yeah. press conference. So, I mean, I'm totally with you on that, Ben. I don't really think we learned much from this other than Mike yeah. McGlinchey. The one thing that could hint to whoever a quarterback is, that final quote from Kyle Shanahan. Drew, it was something like Drew Brees, Drew Brees and who Lamar has Jackson. that mobility of Lamar. That screams Trey Lance or Justin Fields to me right away. One of those two guys, I do. I mean, I've been saying it all the way. I hope they should be a Niner. It makes perfect sense that they should be a Niner. After that, I I have a pretty strong feeling that one of those guys will be a Niner. I know you saw the reports about Mac Jones and about Trey Lance. One of those two. Do not rule out Justin Fields yet because it was so obvious that Kyle Shanahan – had zero intentions of giving away who this guy was. He said there were five guys that he liked, wouldn't even really name any of those guys other than Mac Jones. And that was because people were asking questions about Mac Jones, which by the way, he was just dodging those questions left and right, trying to get the answer that he wanted to get out, not what the reporters wanted to get out. The only answer we got, as we already said, is McGlinchey. But overall, definitely an interesting press conference to say the least. No one really... No, there's no certainty about who we're taking at four. It could be Kelamon for all that matter. Hopefully not, <laughs> but it could really be some random guy at pick number three if we really if we're really talking about that. Sam, I went in to the press conference thinking the pick is gonna be Mac Jones. And it felt even further solidified. I, I think even stronger now that the pick is gonna be Mac. The way Kyle Almost ask the fans to, hey, don't jump on the QB right away. Give him some time. To me, it sounds like he was setting up the pick to be Mac Jones. If you liked a guy at 12, you should like him at three. Yes, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I would say the three things that I took away were, one, one thing that we already knew was Lynch is deferring to Shanahan on this pick. So to me... He's, he had a slick way of just wiping his hands of it and saying, listen, if you're not happy, this is Shanahan's pick, just so you know. The other thing is, is Shanahan and the 49er organization could give two bleeps about what we think as a fan base. They made that very clear. And I would say my biggest takeaway was, and a lot of people caught him saying starting quarterback, but within that, he also said, when we moved up, two, three, we had three guys in mind. We now have fallen in love with five guys. So who were those three guys? Was that third guy, Mac Jones? And that was who he always thought he was going to get. And then the scouting department talked him in two fields and Lance. And so now he kind of enjoys watching how all five of these guys play. I don't know, but that's something that stood out to me. Yeah. I mean, the presser, to say the least, there's so many thoughts flying around. It could be Mac Jones, say, with that 12-3 quote. It could be Trey Lance with that Lamar quote or the Justin Fields. could be Justin Fields right there. Right. The other conclusion I will say, starting quarterback, as you said, Jesse, I think Garoppolo is probably gone. And I was playing this for the end of the video, but let's just talk about this right now. Yeah. There, I'm, a, I'm wearing a Garoppolo jersey today. Because this is the last time I think I will ever wear this jersey. I I think 100% Garoppolo is gone after this. I think you brought in Nate Sudfeld, who isn't what you think of a backup quarterback. But you look at what they gave him. They gave him guaranteed money. He's worked with Rich Gangarilla before. I definitely think he can be the backup quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. Josh Rosen also knows the system decently well. Could be the backup quarterback for the 49ers going into next season. Even though it's very risky to get rid of Garoppolo, I do think it will happen. You save cap a little bit, you get possibly another second or a third. And by the way, I'll, we'll talk about those second and thirds later because, in my opinion, the more picks, the better, especially for this draft, in my opinion, because you got a fair amount of needs for this team, a fair amount of holes, in my opinion, more holes than people would think. My only concern with trading Garoppolo, the market is very small, in my opinion. I think you look at this, the NFL landscape. Only two teams stand out to me, Denver and New England. I think one of those two teams should be getting Garoppolo, and I bet those two teams are probably the only teams that are going to make offers for Garoppolo. I don't think teams like Washington would offer anything because they have Fitzpatrick. Most teams have a rookie in place, or they have a bridge quarterback in place ready to go for 2022. So 
in my opinion, it's going to be tough trading him. I think the value you're looking at a third minimum, I'm hoping for a second. You've seen the rumors that New England might give up a first. I don't believe that at this point. We'll have to see what happens. But yeah, that's what I think about Garoppolo. Jesse, what about you? What do you think about Garoppolo moving on? Yeah, I mean, this is the worst kept secret in the league. We've we've all known that they were trying to get rid of Garoppolo. We knew it before they traded up to three. We certainly knew it after they traded up to three. And anybody who actually thought he was in the plans for this year, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, the writing's been on the wall the whole time. I will say this. I actually do think Washington could be a player in it, and I think the Bears could be as well. That said, possibly two out of those four teams are going to get a quarterback in this draft. So if that happens, that still leaves us with two possible options. Those guys aren't going to bid against themselves. I would say probably a third rounder unless we're willing to throw something else in to maybe make that a second rounder. Maybe we want to throw in our third rounder to get up into the second round, or maybe we want to take a future pick that could escalate from a third round to a second round or something like that. But to me, yeah, Garoppolo is as good as gone. He's not going to make it until the end of day Sunday. And that's just what it is. I'm, I'm curious to see where he ends up. And as Kyle Shanahan said, he doesn't even know if he's going to be alive on Sunday. So <laughs> we'll have to see what happens there. Ben, what about you? What you got to say about Jimmy Garoppolo? Well, you know, I think I, I would agree with a lot of what everyone has said so far, but I, I really think the Niners are going to struggle to trade Mac or to trade Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, I mean, let's just be real. There's not going to be many options. And if you get, I, I think it's going to be interesting. One thing is going to be uh, who's going to wear number 10. Um, but you know, besides <laughs> that, uh, I, I, I listen, I, I just think with Jimmy, like Jesse said, it's the worst kept secret in the league. So I don't think he has that second round value. Even right now, you look at how many injuries he's had, how expensive he is, unless he's already agreeing to a contract, um, restructure ahead of time, which even even if we can't get a second round pick, I still think he's going to have to restructure his contract. It's that bad of a situation. And because the Niners have been so blatant with what they've been doing, it, it makes it a lot easier for teams who are interested in him. And then like for all the reasons Jesse mentioned, there's so few teams actually interested in him. And that, that's going to be even more narrowed down during the draft because we literally don't know what's going to happen. And, and this year is going to be as crazy as a draft as ever. So, um, yeah, I, I just think overall they're going to have a really tough time trading Jimmy Garoppolo, and I don't see them getting more than a third-round pick at best for him. That's just my opinion. Sure. I would what say this, too, just, ahead, just real quick. I would say this. We talked about four teams possibly going down to two. Don't rule out the Carolina Panthers selecting fields if he falls to eight and then them flipping Darnold. That's also a possibility. So if that happens, that could be even less teams that are, are in the mix for Garoppolo. You see, here's my thing about that. I don't think they would give up a second, fourth, and a sixth for Sam Darnold to probably sell him for a cheaper price than that. I don't think they would take... I think right now, I currently think that they're in the market for an offensive lineman or Kyle Pitts if, he's, if he falls. I think, yeah, you could have gone a quarterback, but it would be very hard. You would have to trade with Atlanta, which is an in-division trade. That would have to be a king's ransom. I do, as I said earlier in this offseason, I do think Darnold has a lot of potential. I think Darnold's their man for the future. I don't think they would give it up, they would give up that much to just move on for him right away. I think Darnold's the future for the Carolina Panthers. At, at this point, yeah, you could go quarterback. You could go like a Kyle Trask, maybe. I highly doubt it. I would probably go Sam Darnold for the Carolina Panthers for the future, considering what they gave up for him. That's what the plan seems right now. Yeah, I would think on the surface that would be the case. But like I said, if Fields falls to eight, I really think what happened was when San Francisco moved up to three, they started to speculate and say, okay, well, they're probably picking Fields or Lance, which means that next guy on our list, whether that's Lance or Fields, may not make it to us. So we've got to figure that out now. But if one of those guys falls to him, I, I'm telling you, do not be shocked if it happens. I've got a lot of, a lot of friends that are very plugged into that team. And they're saying that's the rumors that they're hearing as well. So don't be shocked. I, I think also those some of those picks were future picks. So really, if it's a future third, that's equivalent to a fourth round pick this year is what it equates to. So that's how that's how you kind of equalize future picks. So I, I'm not saying book it, but don't be shocked if it happens. Definitely a hot take right there, I got to say, but. I wouldn't be surprised either. I mean, I don't think it will happen, but it could definitely happen. I'm totally with you on that. Eric, what do you think about Jimmy Garoppolo? We didn't get to you for that. 
My opinion has not wavered, and Jesse can confirm this. I've said for months, I don't think Jimmy has any trade value. Or if he does, it's minimal. I'm talking maybe a fourth, fifth rounder. And that's because Jimmy's missed two out of the last three years, for the most part. And not only that, when he's on the field, he's all right. I mean, I, I can't see a team se- send in a second round or third round pick to us for a mediocre quarterback who's had injury issues. I don't think he has it. I think we might end up cutting him or he might stay on this roster for one more season. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he stayed on this roster. And I do think if the 49ers don't believe they can trade him, I think uh, taking a guy like Trey Lance, who has the lowest floor out of all those five quarterbacks, in my opinion, that might be a smart move. Even though I do think Trey Lance can start day one on this team, considering all the weapons you have on this team, considering the protection that you have, considering the offense-minded coach you have, I definitely think Trey Lance can start day one, but it's always good to have security. So I think keeping Garoppolo, it's not the end of the world. I just don't think Kyle Shanahan has any faith in him, as we saw by the trade. So I definitely think you – I would not expect Jimmy Garoppolo to play much this year, but I definitely think you can see him on the team still. Absolutely. All right, let's move into the draft. And before we – so how we're going to do this, as I said earlier, we're going to talk about each position that we think is in need. We'll highlight some guys – and we'll talk about where we think those guys can go or where we should take those guys. But first of all, I want to start with the f- pick 43 because this is a very interesting pick. I've seen a lot of rumors that the saying that the 49ers may trade up in the draft. I've seen a lot of rumors saying that the Niners might trade back in the draft with 43. I want to hear what you have to say for this. So there's a lot of options there. Eric, in your opinion, what's the best situation for 43, considering if the board plays out how you think you, it would play out in the real draft? Yeah, pick 43, my philosophy with every draft pick is always best player available. Now, cornerback does feel like the biggest need, in my opinion. I mean, we are one Jason Verrett injury or Emmanuel Mosley injury away from starting Dante Johnson. And I don't think any Niners fans want to be in that scenario. So I've been scouting these cornerbacks, and that's who I'm eyeing with pick 43. You got a guy... I mean, my dream guy, my dream corner at 43 would be Greg Newsom from Northwestern, but I don't expect him to be there. Another guy that I love, and yes, he's had the back injury, Caleb Farley. Now, what came to my mind when I heard he was having this back surgery was a basketball player, Michael Porter Jr., Mm -hmm. who was a phenomenal player who had the same back surgery and slipped in the draft. And now... I bet you there's at least six or seven teams that regret who who they pick Absolutely, ahead of Michael man. Porter Ju- Michael Porter Jr. So if Caleb Farley for some reason starts slipping down the draft board, which is what's expected, that's what I'm hearing. And if he somehow slips to 43, I'd pull the trigger because he was one of my favorite prospects before you know before the surgery came out. I loved Farley. I mean, he was right up there with Sertan and J.C. Horn for me. But if he's not there, you know, you got Ben's buddy, uh, Asante Samuel, and, you know, Elijah Molden, Aaron Robinson, Tyson Campbell. Those are all corners that I like at 43. Now, the other position that I'm eyeing, and it's not the biggest need, but it's wide receiver. And I got a few receivers that I'm really targeting at 43 that I love. And that would be uh, some guys like, if, if Rashad Bateman is there, I don't expect him to be there. I love Rashad Bateman. That guy is so polished. He's phenomenal. I will say I have I have heard reports that he could definitely follow the first round because apparently scouts are way lower on him than fans are. You know what? And he was he was listed as six two and he, he measured as six foot. So there's some things you know that scouts might might not like about that. A uh, couple other guys, Kadarius Tony. If he slips, that's the perfect slot. But I I don't think he's going to be there. The two more realistic players that I love at wide receiver at pick forty three is Diami Brown and Elijah Moore. Both those guys, phenomenal slot receivers. I think they're polished, and they can start day one. We can put them in the slot. If Debo gets hurt again, these are phenomenal receivers. Absolutely. Jesse, what you have to say about 43 or anything you want to build off of from Eric? Yeah, so for me, the positions of need that I have that are probably the most pressing on this team would be tackle, wide receiver, quarterback, interior line and corner. And that would be the order that I would actually put it in. 
So for me, I would love to go corner with that round two pick. The guy that I would like that I think is realistically going to fall to us, and I think that he is actually the best nickel corner in this draft, is Aaron Robinson out of UCF. If you look at the way he plays, he plays a lot like J.C. Horn, and I love J.C. Horn. There's no secret about that. But he does it from that nickel spot. He's also big enough that he could technically kick outside, but I would prefer that he played that nickel spot. If we go receiver in round two, much like Bay said, Diambi Brown would be a good one. I also think round three that there's a couple guys that, that we could go, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But for me, corner is that one spot that I think we have to address right away, whether it's a trade back up into the first round or stay at 43. That's something that we absolutely have to address. And how weird would it be? <laughs> I'm going to throw this out there, and I, I highly doubt it happens. But wouldn't it be funny if we traded back up in the first round and got that last pick from Tampa Bay and made Jimmy Garoppolo the backup once again to Tom Brady and gave them that 43rd pick as well? <laughs> Interesting. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> That's a – yeah, man. I mean, that would be interesting right there. So, for sure. Ben, what you got to say about 43? So, wow, uh, that was a little crazy there by Jesse. He's just going to throw <laughs> no. out everything like that. Uh, Way no, off so the rails. That we'll one just it. came to me. I don't know why, but I was just like, <laughs> wouldn't that be nuts? Would it be. would. Uh, I, I think in terms of pick number 43, uh, I'm with Bay Area Baller. I, I, I want to take the best player available. Um, I, I do think there is something to the fact that they should take certain positions but I don't think they should take one position over the other. I think they should just have positions in mind and take the best player available from those pool, from that pool positions. And for me, those three positions are, are corner number one. I mean, people have covered this just, just in these last few minutes, Jason Varek gets hurt, which could very easily happen. The secondary is, it, it, it's bad and they have yeah. no depth and it could get really scary quick. And the Super Bowl run that they're trying to replicate could be over just because of that. So Corner than wide receiver, I think, has to be a position that people need to talk more about. We have Debo, we have Ayuk, but Kendrick Bourne played a lot more than people realize. He played with like nearly 500 snaps last year. He, he was excellent for this team on third downs, getting those first downs in possession. And, and we need that type of receiver. And then also offensive line, let's just be real. We have one of the older offensive lines in the league, even if you consider – um, our offensive line very good, which that's you know that's a mixed opinion right now, depending on the offensive lineman. But for me, I, I think no matter what, you need to get younger at the position. So the five names, just based off that, that I, I've been looking at are first off, Rashad Bateman and, and Terrence Marshall. Those are two guys I've heard that can drop into the second round and, and could be available potentially for the 49ers. Uh, another guy that you guys mentioned is Deami Brown. I, I love him, but I think out of all of those guys, Terrence Marshall – it would be the best fit out of all, all of them because, like I said, with Kendrick Bourne, you're losing that guy in that role. And with Terrence Marshall, he's Kendrick Bourne plus. He's better, and he's going to add a different dynamic to this offense with Depot, with IU, and you don't have to rely on those guys as much. So I'd be really excited for someone like that. But if we're talking about corner, i got to talk about my guy out of Florida State, Asante Samuel Jr., He's a little undersized, but besides that, there's really not much to complain about. He can play slot this season, and you can even kick him outside potentially down the road. Um, I I'm really excited for him. I actually might get to cover him for the NFL draft, so I'm hoping the Niners pick him. That would be really cool. Hey, that would be really exciting. But, you know, he has all the tools and, all, and just everything you need to be a corner. He's great in space. He has a rocket up his butt, and, and he can just do all kinds of different things on the field. And then the last guy I want to talk about – at pick number 43 is Landon Dickerson. I would be so excited if the 49ers would go and get the center out of Alabama. If you're not familiar, he tore his ACL. He was the one who's doing cartwheels behind Mac Jones at the pro day. And he's would if you talk to everyone who, who's who's a media member, the first thing they say about this kid is he would have been a first round pick if not for that ACL. And for me, if I'm the 49ers, you're looking at your offensive line. That would be a perfect pick because he can take over for Alex Mack down the road. Let's say it doesn't work out. Or he can even play guard if he's going to come back sooner than that. So I think no matter what, it's a win-win. And that's a guy I would be very, very excited with. And I think that would be a really mature pick. Um, but I do want to say just before I end, those are the people I would take. I think Kyle could also take a running back because let's be real. Kyle does like to invest in running backs. He just – hasn't done it since Joe Williams in the draft. So 
Um, you know, I, I think they're going to try and invest in that position in some way. So I, I don't want to take a running back, but if we're talking about it, Michael Carter is awesome out of UNC. Travis Etienne might be there. So I'd be excited for either of those players. But um, yeah, I think overall we're going to have an, uh, I think we're going to have a really good option at 43, no matter what. I think there's still going to be a lot of good players there, especially with how weird this year is. I, I think teams are going to take advantage of that. And I just hope the Niners are one of those teams. And to add to the point about Travis Etienne, that would be, in my opinion, one of the most perfect fits in this draft. Travis Etienne and Kyle Shanahan. I think if he's there at 43, personally, I don't expect a running back at 43 unless it's Travis Etienne. I think that's too perfect of a fit to pass up on. And I would personally love that pick. But for me, I think at 43, there's just so many options, which it's so hard. You could trade back. I do think trading back would be a good option. I think you'll have depth later on, later in the draft, later in round two and maybe mid round three. You can get one team I looked at that could trade up Cleveland. Maybe I was trying to see a team in the late and maybe Cleveland's definitely like a hot take. I don't think they will trade up, but that's kind of the ideal spot. They have two thirds. They have, or maybe they don't have two thirds. I, I, I'm forgetting, but they have like pick, I think 50, nine or something like that that's probably pretty pretty much an ideal spot the late 50s trade back you can get an extra third there but if we stay at 43 and just this is just in general my biggest needs for this team cornerback number one wide receiver number two linebacker number three after that it gets a bit interesting i would probably go offensive line edge tight end and the reason i put those three first the cornerback let's it, cornerback wide receiver and linebacker let's look at this depth i tweeted this out a few days ago so cornerback depth you have dante johnson tim harris ken webster adonis alexander brian bobby calhoun and mark fields those last three guys i've never heard of before <laughs> so that's pretty bad linebacker depth is pretty thin you have flanagan fouls jonas griffith and nathan jerry you have two of those guys who are primarily on the team for special teams, not because they're there to play that middle linebacker position or wherever the, they want them playing. And wide receiver, after that, the wide receiver depth isn't that bad, but there's so many question marks with it. You have Jalen Hurd, you have the injuries. Mohamed Sanu is probably our best receiver on this depth chart right now. River Craycraft, Jawan Jennings, Travis Benjamin, Matt Cole, Austin Pearl, Trent Sherfield, and Kevin White. So just a lot of question marks there. You need to solidify that wide receiver. And hey Sam, I'm, Sam, back to back to linebacker. You're not a big Aziz Al Shair guy because I like me some. No, I am. I am a big Aziz Al Shair guy. We need someone who can back him up and compete with him for that starting job. Because right now, your best linebacker on the team behind those starting three is Demetrius Flanagan Fowles, and his primary role is special teams, not playing that linebacker position, not being a three down linebacker, or four down linebacker. I should say, we need a guy who can be that four down linebacker or three down linebacker for this team to come in in case there's an injury, because if one of those guys goes down, whether it's Greenlaw, whether it's Aziz al Shair, whether it's Fred Warner, dare I say it, we're going to be screwed at linebacker because there's going to be a lot of difficulty filling that hole in my opinion. And that's a crucial hole for this 49ers defense, especially with now D'Amico Ryan's at head coach, a former linebacker coach. I think you need to fill that hole a bit more because I have a feeling they might rely on the linebackers a bit more. So we'll have to see right there, but Round two, I think when you look at where the board's going to be at round two at 43, you're probably looking at cornerback and wide receiver. I think one name I would go at. So let's just start with cornerback. There's definitely a few names I would go at cornerback for round. I'll just let's just get it right into cornerback for everyone, I think, because we talked a lot about 43. Let's just talk about cornerback, where you think we could gather guys and what guys you think we can get later on. So. For me, cornerback, we need two in this draft, not one. We need, we definitely need two in this draft. And I think one of those has to be in the first three rounds, whether we trade up back into round one, whether we pick at 43, whether we trade back into round three or we take one at 102, we have to get a cornerback in the first three rounds. And that's something that the 49ers haven't done often, but this year it's got to change. And when you look at what the 49ers need, I think they really need a gritty cornerback, a guy who's very physical, a guy who likes to get in there, mess plays up, get in other players' heads. I love those guys a lot, and I definitely think that's what the 49ers are looking for, especially after losing Akella Witherspoon, who I believe is actually going to be a bigger loss than it sounds. I think he's going to do really well in Seattle. We'll have to see about that. Definitely a hot take. But two guys you can talk about for a day two pick, maybe day one, Afedu Melifonu out of Syracuse and Kelvin Joseph out of Kentucky. Those are two gritty cornerbacks if you want to talk. And I'm 
primarily focusing on the outside because I think nickel, yeah, you do need some depth at nickel as well. But I think you look at the outside because if Jason Brett's gone, that's going to be a hard position to fill. Meanwhile, if you have Kalon Williams gone, I think you can slide a guy like Tarverius Moore into the slot or something like that. You have decent depth for that. But I think you look at the outside, that's definitely a lot worse. So two guys, a Fado Melifon with Kelvin Joseph. Those are two of my favorite guys round two. Eric Stokes is another guy too. I, I forgot to bring up Tyson Campbell. I know he's been climbing up boards. I wonder if Eric Stokes is climbing up boards as well because they're – more people watching Tyson Campbell film late now. So I wonder if Eric Stokes, this guy ran a very fast 40 time. That could be a very good option. Greg Newsom, Caleb Farley, two great options. I personally don't think they'll make it to us, but if they're there, I think we have to take those guys. Now, if you want a bit of a later round guy, there's two guys I really like. First guy I've been hiring this entire draft process, Israel Mukawamu, the cornerback out of, uh, not Syracuse, excuse me, South Carolina. He's paired up next to J.C. Horn. I don't get why a lot of scouts are very low on him. I love this kid. Very physical. You're watching this J.C. Horn tape. Let's watch J.C. Horn. Oh, crap. Who's this guy on the other side? That's Israel Mukuwama. This guy's a gritty guy. He can also play safety as well. Some teams have him there. That could be why his stock is drafting. So lots of versatility. And you'll see my theme with versatility in a lot of my guys. The last guy I'll talk about before I give you guys a stage Benjamin St. Juice out of Minnesota. This guy did pretty well at the Senior Bowl. A very gritty cornerback. Jesse, you have a smile on your face. I have a feeling you were going to talk about him as well. Yeah, absolutely. I had him uh, as like a fourth round type guy. Yeah, definitely probably a day three guy. Maybe even day two. Maybe he slides in there. I don't really know. We'll have to see what happens. But you definitely need two cornerbacks in this draft, two gritty quarterbacks. Those five guys are my favorite. And whoever wants to take the floor, talk about their favorite cornerbacks. Go right for it because it seems like that's everyone's top need at this moment. Yeah, I think I think another guy, if we go round three, that I would like to look at is Paulson Edibo out of Stanford. He's another big body guy. And I think I think talent wise, he's definitely uh an early second round talent, but for some reason, actually not for some reason, there's just so many damn good corners in this draft that he's probably gonna go in round three. But, but I he think was an opt out. He was an opt out. So he was. sometimes those guys might slip a little bit. For sure, for sure. Yeah, especially especially when you're not a, a first round talent. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I just think to your point, there's so many guys. There's Lenore out of Oregon. There's a guy in Washington. There's a guy at Cal. Like there's there's literally probably 30 corners that if we could get two of them, I'd be happy. So corner, I agree with you. I had it in second round. I had it in the third round. I had it in the fourth round. And I think if we have a perfect draft, we probably do need to get two corners. And it's got to be very early for both of those corners, in my opinion. Yeah. And and I think for me, uh, I agree with a lot of what you guys have been saying. I want to take two corners in this draft, if not at least one. And it has to be in it has to be in day two for me, because we're obviously not going to be taking one day one. And um, I actually think for the 49ers, I think that second round spot is going to be best player available. But if you listen to something specific they said at the po- or at the press conference earlier, was that there's 160 really good players in this draft. And if you look at the picks the Niners have, they have in the later rounds 155, 172, 180, and 194. So I think they're actually going to consolidate some of those picks to move up in the third round and potentially still hang on to that other third round pick so that you can get more shots at the dark board and you can get some of those picks early on because I think past that fifth, sixth round, the Niners don't value a lot of guys. So for me, if I'm looking at it from that perspective, I love both of the Georgia corners that you guys mentioned, Tyson Campbell um, and, of course, the other one. Um, and I, I want my, my guy, Asante Samuel Jr., to somehow fall to us at 43, of course. But I also love a guy like Kelvin Joseph or um, the Syracuse corner that was mentioned earlier. He's amazing as well. I think he's a guy who could definitely – be there for the 49ers he could be some of their targeting uh, i love the minnesota corner as well that uh, that jesse was talking about benjamin st shoot just uh, he, he's really interesting to me he's a big guy he's not as fast but he has a lot of great physical skill set uh, skill sets and i think for the niners they're gonna have to target um two types of corners they're gonna have to get a really big corner or they're gonna have to get a slot corner and um for me i'd i'd prefer them to just address both um, because I think that's the most ideal situation. The younger you get, the better. And then you don't have to worry as much. Even if Jason Fred does play great, let's be real. It's going to be hard to figure out the, the best situation because you're either going to have to pay him long term and risk that injury again, 
or let him go in free agency and let maybe your best corner go. So I think they're going to have to address that position at some point in the next two years, no matter what. Absolutely. Eric, what do you think about corner? Yeah, I got a guy in round three, four, and five. And my round three guy I'm eyeing is Rashad Wild Goose. And he, he went to Wisconsin, and Wisconsin plays a ton of zone. But this guy looks like he has the tools to be a lockdown man corner. So he might slip because he wasn't playing to his strengths at Wisconsin. And not only that, he only played a handful of games this year because he had a shoulder injury. A round four I guy, I, a guy I like, he's undersized out of Oklahoma – Trey Brown. This guy's a dog. Not only that, he also brings an element in the kick return game. When I'm watching his highlights, so half of them were like kick returns that he's returning, you know, across the 50 yard line. So he's I really like a like, sixth round guy too, isn't he? You can get him in the fifth or the sixth. Oh yeah, for sure. I was seeing, I was seeing four or five. He was a four year player at Oklahoma. So he was on the field a lot. He had a lot of snaps. He gets a little too physical at times. He was, uh, he had a lot of penalties called against him, but hopefully that's something you can coach up. The dog that he has, you can't coach. So that's what I like about Trey Brown. Um, my round five guy, I'm a Bay Area baller. I watch my Bay Area guys, Cameron Bynum out of Cal. That's he's I mean. not he's not the fastest guy, right? His, his measurables, he's not the biggest, but this guy is just a good coverage corner. He's not getting burnt. He's in the right spot. I like Cameron Bynum. Maybe in the fifth round. And yeah, those are my three guys I'm eyeing right there. I like it. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think it's weird. The cornerback rankings have been all over the place because I I mean I just looked at one board. Rashad Wild Goose, you said he's a third round guy. One board I just saw had him at 248 or something like that. It's kind of crazy where people are ranking all these corners. So you could see a lot of surprises with the corners coming in this draft. You could see guys fall. Caleb Farley being one of those guys that I think could fall very far back in this draft. You could also see a ton of reaches. Tyson Campbell was rumored to be in round one. I don't think that's necessarily a reach. Yes, it's a bit of a reach, but I think if they want Tyson Campbell round one, go for it because this corner class, it, I mean, it's all over the board from what I've heard with rankings. Same with wide receiver. And I think it's a good segue to move to wide receiver because as I said, this is my second biggest need. And personally, I'm also looking for two wide receivers in this draft. I think or maybe one. I, it's interesting. I think you could go two routes with this and maybe do both of those routes. So plan A would be a Jalen Hurd replacement. And this is a very limited one, but three guys that just pop out to you. Tamorion Terry out of Florida State. Ben knows something about that guy. That guy is one of my favorite receivers in this draft. Some guy very similar to him, Trayvon Grimes out of Florida. Another big guy can replace Tamori on Terry if you don't want him. I've heard there's some character issues with Tamori on Terry, so that could be another good option. Personally, I do like Tamori on Terry a bit better. That tape is absolutely ridiculous. And the other guy who wouldn't bring the size but brings the versatility, Demetric Felton. And this is a guy who I would not be surprised on if Kyle Shanahan trades up and reaches on a little He's bit. He's a Shanahan guy. He, is, he has Kyle Shanahan written all over him. So, I mean, I would not be surprised if the Niners just – trade up, get him. I would not be surprised if Kyle Shanahan loves this guy and just wants this guy so badly. So those are three receivers for plan A. Now plan B, I think you just go for a wide receiver three, a general wide receiver three. Those three guys could be that option. But I think if you want some more secure options, some safer picks, I'll give you guys in rounds two, three, four, and five, I would probably go Terry and Grimes. So I'll just leave there. But two, three, and four, Round two, Elijah Moore. I love that guy. I do think he could go round one. I've heard some rumors that someone has them really high on their board. I heard wide receiver three for one team, so he definitely could go round one. We'll have to see. Round three, Tylen Walls. Again, this could be a bit high, so we'll have to see with him. Uh, not, not Sorry, a bit low for him, I should say. A bit high in the draft. Well, I don't really know. bit low for Tylen Walls to go. He could go round two. We'll have to see. In round four, Jalen Darden out of North Texas. This guy absolutely dominated CSU, CUSA football. And that dude when you is look so at, shifty. Exactly. He is shifty. Kyle Shanahan loves that. I definitely think he could be a wide receiver three in this draft. Terrence Marshall as well. I'll add him to the list. Ben said that already. But Terrence Marshall, that guy is Kendrick Bourne plus more. And I definitely think if you want a Kendrick Bourne plus more, Terrence Marshall could be the pick at 43. So those are the receivers. Two plans right there. You could go both plans. You could go one plan, could go the other. I don't really know. Eric, what you got to say about wide receiver? 
Wide receiver, I'm not going to lie, Sam. I feel like it's my specialty. That's the position I've really dialed in these last couple of weeks, analyzing a lot of these draft prospects. And let me tell you who I like. I got two guys who I don't know if they're round three or round four guys, but they're guys that I really like. And out of Western Mich- Michigan, Dwayne Eskridge. I love him. Ooh, I He's like electric. That. And not only that, this guy, he gets it upfield. He's not tiptoeing and dancing around. He's got some moves, but really, I love that he's a north-south guy, and he's dynamic. Another another smaller school player out of South Dakota State, Cade Johnson. I really like Cade Johnson. He feels pretty polished for a, for a guy you can get round three, round four. Love Cade Johnson. If we're going to go uh, – th- this is another like round four-ish guy. You let me know if you guys see him elsewhere. But Amari Rogers, he's another kind of – uh, hybrid can give you a rushing element to him as well as he's a slot guy. I love Amari Rogers out of Clemson. You already mentioned Jalen Darden out of North Texas. That dude's got juke moves for days. He will juke you out of your shoes. So I like Jalen Darden and a guy that really, I think 49ers Twitter has put me on to is Austin Watkins and where he's from uh, Alabama, Birmingham and Austin Watkins When I watch this tape, it gives me flashbacks to a young Josh Gordon. Like Josh Gordon, early in his career with the Browns, just with his size, his speed, and his ability to beat you deep down the field. I like Austin Watkins. And a guy later, I don't know where he's going to go. I think he's a a potentially a day three guy, is Smith Marset out of Iowa, right? He's got some size and speed. He's a guy, if we want a deep threat, Smith Marset. (laughs) <laughs> there you go. Uh, all right. So a couple of guys for me, if we go round three guy that could be there is two, two out. Well, five, nine, one seventy five. I love his skill set, And especially with a guy like Wes Welker coaching him, I think that that could be uh, a great fit there. I look at Benjamin St. Joe's, I mean, not, excuse me, uh, Seth Williams out of Auburn for, uh, oh, love round that guy. four, six foot three, two twenty talking about a guy that's going to bully you that's one guy that's going to do it and then another round three guy would be Amon Ross St. Brown I believe that we've talked about him earlier but those are some guys that I'm looking at but for me the guy that I've really fallen in love with is definitely Seth Williams out of Auburn that's 6'3 220 you just you can't beat it and he did it in the SEC bullied a lot of very good corners he high point high points the ball extremely well is extremely aggressive at the catch point catches away from his body, just uh, everything that you can like about somebody that can win in contesting catches, he's the guy for you. So those are the guys that I'm looking at. Also could be another Jalen Hurd replacement with that size if you really want to. Right. I mean, the versatility you don't know about, but that's also with Tamari on Terry. That's with Trayvon Grimes. Right. Could just put him in there. Would be a very good fit. I will say, though, I'm – a lot lower on Tutu Atwell than a lot of people. The film, Me I too. Want, I, yeah, I, I, the I'm thing, not big the, on Tutu. My thing with the I'm film not, is, it could. I think I do. I will say quarterback play definitely helps with yeah. the film, like looking weak. But it was just, it, it, it was interesting to see. He was just open on every play, and I was confused how he did that. That was that was my <laughs> big concern with Tutu Atwell. Like I didn't, really, he didn't have the size, speed. I mean, it was it was there, but it wasn't it wasn't the greatest speed from what I saw. And then it was it was just interesting, Phil. I couldn't really figure him out, so I'm a bit lower on Tutu Atwell. But with a guy, as you said, Jesse, with a guy like Wes Welker, it could very well work out in San Francisco. Yeah, that's what I look at. Another guy that I talked about a couple weeks ago. You know, we can get him around five six, and I'm sure that they've seen a lot of film on him because they've been watching Zach Wilson, and that's. That's Dax Milne, to be real with you. I think Mm -hmm. in that slot spot, everybody's like, well, he's way too slow. Well, that may be true. He didn't run the fastest 40, but look at Wes Welker. He ran a 4.79, if I remember correctly. His three cone wasn't very quick. Like There was nothing about Wes Welker that screamed he would be a good NFL receiver. So there's a lot that goes into it. I think just knowing how to get open, it doesn't matter how fast you are. That plays big into it. And again, if you have somebody like Wes Welker who's done that job and done it at an elite level, if you are more physically gifted than he is, he can certainly work with that. Yeah, and for me at at wide receiver, uh, you know, I I do want to touch on those two guys I talked about earlier, Rashad Bateman, Terrence Marshall. I I think for for me, Terrence Marshall, 
I've heard he's going to be there. And I think he is not just an ideal fit, but he's the ideal Kendrick Bourne replacement if you look at any of the receivers in this draft. And like Sam mentioned, he really is Kendrick Bourne plus. He's an impressive receiver. He's going to make those third down catches. He's going to fill that role for the 49ers. They don't have to use this. They can use Devo and and Ayuk for more gadget plays if they get a guy like Terrence Marshall. So I think that's where the value is in him. But my favorite receiver in the draft is someone everyone has maybe talked about a little bit, but I really want to talk about is De'Ami Brown. I love this kid. He's my favorite second, third round receiver out of anyone. You know, he's getting a lot of this flack because he only plays on the left side of the field. He only runs so many routes. But if you look at what North Carolina asked him to do, what they were trying to accomplish within that offense, um, he did everything that was asked of him. And he's fairly newer to the position. So I think he's only going to get better from here. If you look at his advanced statistics, he gets all the deep stuff. Um, that's where his bread and butter is. And I think he could be a really explosive playmaker for the 49ers, especially when we see them go away from Jimmy Garoppolo and bring in this new quarterback. They're going to need some more pass catchers who can get the ball you know, down the field and, and pass the numbers. Um, so I think that's just going to be something they're going to have to plan for. But, you know, I, I hate that that all you guys went ahead of me because you're all, you're mentioning all these guys I love, like Kate <laughs> Johnson and the kid out of North Texas. And um, there's even the Stanford receiver, I think, Simia. Oh, gosh, I was going to put – Fahoko? Is it Fahoko? Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. not going to try, but – but um, there's, <laughs> there's just it's, – it's a deep receiver class. And I think if you look at Kyle Shanahan's history, you know, it's uh, – it's not just because I agree with what Sam said, but Kyle has taken a, one or two receivers in every single year that he's drafted. And people really need to keep that in mind. And he's taken them high when he has. So I think that's going to happen again. Um, and I think he, you know he's just going to fall in love with someone in this draft. I think it even could be a Kadarius Tony if they want to trade up for someone. So, um, you know, to me, I think there's any number of options for the Niners at wide receiver, whether they want to go early, whether they want to go later on. And like I mentioned earlier, there's, they have 160 players on their board. So even if it's around 155, if they love some receivers at that point, great, go get one. So, you know, I think there's a lot of different options for the, for the Niners in the draft uh, at receiver. I would say also, don't rule out ahead. Golden Tate either. I mean, he's still out there, and he would be yeah. perfect yeah. for us in the slot. So, well, well, and hey, apparently Julio Jones is, is available. And, uh <laughs> Just Why does not, Golden dude? Tate? Golden Tate feels like he fits our offense with yeah. the way he's good after the catch. He's tough. Absolutely. I agree with that a lot, Jesse. Yeah, I mean, free agency. There's going to be guys. I I would not be surprised after the draft. The Niners brought in a few guys because I mean, you still got a lot of talent out there. Specifically at our biggest need, cornerback. You still have a decent amount of talent at cornerback. Do not be surprised if the Niners bring someone in after the draft also back to wide receiver real quick before we move on one thing to keep an eye on look for a kick return or a punt return that is one of our biggest needs for this team i got and a guy like Sam. go ahead i got a guy my, my late round guy who i re- who really popped in the kick return game out of houston marquez, marquez stevenson. stevenson yes yeah uh, yeah yes. Man, that guy looks electric on the kick return he hits the seam he's not tiptoeing i love me some marquez stevenson could be a oh, deep yeah. threat as well Oh, yeah, for sure. I've seen – he's been a guy who, especially early on in this draft process, everyone was talking, this is the sleeper of the draft. And he's probably going to be a round five guy. That's where I've seen round four, round five for him. He could very well be the kick returner next year. And I know we have Travis Benjamin. I know we have Richie James. I know we have River Craycraft. But honestly, Benjamin not, might not even make the roster. River Craycraft might not even make the roster. And frankly, I just don't like Richie James as a punt returner. Kick returner, I'm cool with. Punt returner, though, that's a whole different story. You need someone a bit better for that. Marquez Stevenson could very well fill this role. And I would not be surprised if one of the receivers we take or corners we take is going to be, are going to be, is going to be our kick returner this year. So yeah. definitely oh, something yeah. to keep an eye on in the way how we draft. So wait, Sam, you're telling me my River Craycraft jersey. I should just what, give it <laughs> I mean, River Cray, a person, I do think he'll make the roster at this point. We do need some slot depth, but River Craycraft, I mean, personally, I mean, I really like him, but there's going to be better options out there, I feel like, than River Craycraft. So Zach we'll Wilson have, follows him on Instagram. Hmm. Could that mean <laughs> Zach Wilson to the 49ers? Well, he I follows do. the 49ers. He follows oh, the Falcons. Me and Bay Area Baller. He does not there. follow the Jets, so who knows? interesting we'll have to see how that pans out maybe there's a shocker in the draft at pick two (laughs) so 
We'll have to see. All right, Jesse, one of the positions you talked about earlier on offensive line, you said it was towards the top of your board. I kind of want to hear that because I mean, yes, I do think it's a need, but you had a lot higher than your board than I did. And you look at this offensive line on paper, you have five solid starters at this point. Talk about why you think offensive line is such a big need for this team. Yeah, I just, I feel like we've been playing musical chairs a lot at that right guard position. And I feel like we need to lock that position down. And I also look at, and I, I don't have a lot of names there. I think there's a ton of offensive linemen you can go look at, but I, I feel like that right guard position, we need to solidify. I would prefer, and a lot of guys in college play center and guard. So I would prefer somebody that we could possibly plug in and play that right guard spot. And then if we have an injury to a 36 year old Mac, or we just need to replace him at the end of this year, then he can slide into that center spot and we can look at possibly interior linemen again, either next free agency or in the draft. And I also look at that swing tackle spot. We have who behind the tackle spot. We have Coleman who, what he hasn't Justin played school. in two years for us. We have school who is good. He's not good. I guess no, I don't, not, you know what I mean? Nah, we just, Colton exactly. Kevin. So we need, we need some depth. We need some yeah, depth. Yeah. We need some good young depth. And so for me, you know, if, to me, a perfect draft would be, like I said, if, if we could get, let's say, a Golden Tate to play that that slot spot, for me, I would go corner, offensive line, corner, offensive line. That's how I would start my draft in rounds two through four. So um, that's, that's just kind of where I'm at with it, and I would trade some of those fifth-round picks to move back up into the fourth round or do what I got to do to make, make that dream scenario happen. So. Yeah, yeah, it is definitely a deep offensive line draft. And if I'm being honest, offensive line is probably the position that I've looked at the most this draft, considering that beforehand, I did believe offensive line was our biggest need. The offseason went a lot better than I thought it did. So it wasn't as big as need later on. But I looked at a lot of offensive linemen. I think you're probably looking at round three or day three for offensive linemen. I think round three is probably the earliest you would take it. I think there are bigger needs round two maybe you trade back this is one of the reasons you could trade back from round two at 43 maybe you move back keep a second get an extra third or maybe trade garoppolo get an extra third or something like that we'll figure that out but i'll i'll give you a gay a guy who can be round uh, probably this guy's definitely a day two guy i'll start off with trey smith he's i mean he's just a big guy scheme fit he that's he'd have to get used to but i definitely think if you're looking for depth that's cool he can play tackle he can play guard that's something who, someone who could do well there. The next guy is one of my favorite guys in this draft. He's on my top 10 for tackles, James Hudson out of Cincinnati. This guy I've seen going anywhere from round two to round six. So we'll have to see what happens. But James Hudson, this guy, he played right tackle at Michigan last year, transferred to Cincinnati, played left tackle. I've also heard rumors that he can swing at guard. He's a fantastic run blocker fantastic footwork. This guy possesses everything you want in an NFL tackle. He does need a bit of development, but this guy, if he's in the right system, like the 49ers, this guy should be a starting tackle one day. Move him to right guard, move Brunskill out, who is in the contract year, by the way. Have to remember that. If McGlinchey struggles, you can move him to right tackle, do something like that, trade McGlinchey. James Hudson, a phenomenal, uh, just a phenomenal fit for the 49ers. Two guys that you can take later on that are mainly just versatile guys. One guy I'll start out had had a really good senior bowl. Do you need uh do you need me to mute you, uh, Jesse? All right, here, I'm just gonna mute Jesse. We'll continue on the conversation. But one guy I want to talk about really here. I'll just move Jesse from the stream real quick. One guy I want to talk about. This guy's oh here he is. Perfect. Sorry about that. Just wanted to everything good. No, he's getting his headphones on. Okay, anyways, I'll talk about this one guy. This guy's still at the senior bowl. A lot of people were talking about him. David Moore out of Grambling. One of the another small school guy. That's another guy people were talking about pretty often. He, he's a guard, interior lineman, might be able to play center, could play tackle. We'll have to see with him, but that's another guy who I think would fit this team really well. Another swing guy. This guy's probably day round six, round seven. Robert Jones out of Middle Tennessee. This guy is a def for sure a developmental guy, but he can play guard, he can play tackle. Those are two things I look at for the 49ers. I think you're going to see a lot of versatility wherever they go with this pick or wherever they go with the offensive lineman. Whoever they take should be a guy who can play guard, who can play tackle, possibly center. I definitely think they'll take a center later on. Depends. I, it's center's interesting because I they haven't re-signed Ben Garland. I'm, not, I'm kind of surprised why they haven't. 
I definitely think he, he could come back and do something for this team. Also, one guy to keep an eye on. I don't think it's going to happen. Spencer Brown out of Northern Iowa. Been working with Joe Staley all this time. If the 49ers take him, that just tells you that Mike McGlinchey has gone after this year. 100%. He is Mike McGlinchey 2.0. He's six eight. He's like he's the same. When I see he's six nine, dude. Yeah, he's the same size as McGlinchey. They look like the same guy. It's he's McGlinchey two point If the 49ers take him, doubt it happens. But that tells you everything about Mike McGlinchey. I actually do have some names because I forgot that on my show we drafted a whole offensive team. So um, some linemen that I have. So center round three, Josh Myers out of Ohio State. Uh, extremely explosive. Anchors extremely well. Hits the second level in run blocking. Uh, tackle, fourth round, Brady Christensen out of BYU. Extremely good uh, mobility, Definitely. fundamentally sound, violent punch. And then a couple later guys that we could go with would be, you said David Moore out of Grambling. Completely agree with that. He's more of a round five type of guy. And then round seven, Tommy Kramer out of Notre Dame. He's a guard as well. He anchors extremely well. He's a very explosive and he seals off the uh, run defenders at the second level extremely well also. So there's some names. Also, one guy, Notre Dame, you're on that topic, Robert Hainsey. That's another yeah. guy probably could go day three. He was a captain at Notre Dame. A lot of teams like that, that could be another name to watch. Yeah. Hey, where is Walker Little projected to go? Because that's a guy I've heard mm. a lot of good things about. He's probably a day two guy, round two, yeah. round three. Somewhere okay. around there. Okay. That's what I've heard. If you If you need to look up like where guys are going to go, you can actually type in their name and then type in uh, mock draft database after that. And it'll mm -hmm. actually bring you to a website and it pulls in every single major mock draft yeah. and gives you an average of where those guys are going to go. So if you're curious, that's a, a website that I would recommend. Like I said, just Google it, Google the player's name, type in mock draft database, and it'll bring you right to the website, right to their player page and say, Hey, their average spot is round two, pick 42 or what have you. So, right. Uh, yeah, think, it's interesting right now to see where Walker Lilla is. Right now, he's yeah. it looks like he's 74. Hmm. So definitely round three guy. There are some teams that have mocked him round one. Oh, wait, no, those were from months ago. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's interesting. But uh, anyways. Uh, yeah, and he had the uh, injury concern. I think he's really interesting. But, you know, if you're 49ers, you want to go get another injury guy. You know, the, that's yeah. a little tough, especially you'd probably have to take him around 43. But I think, you know, there's three interior guys to me who I'm really interested in in that second and even third round. And like I said, I want to move up towards the end of that third round. So, of course, I mentioned Landon Dick Dickerson earlier. I think, honestly, he would be the perfect fit for the 49ers. He's my ideal 43rd pick because I think you don't have to play him right away. You can play him behind Alex Mack, and you can even let go of Alex Mack with no regards once you um, – you know, get to the end of his contract. But two other guys I want to see in that range are Quinn Miners. Um, he, he's excellent. Everyone was talking about him early on, but I really think he would be another guy who you could play at center, you could play at guard. Um, that's what I'm looking for from these versatile guys. And then Creed Humphrey, he's been rising up draft boards a lot. Some people think he could even be a first round pick, but that's yeah. another guy that I'm looking at. You know, I, I, I want to get j just the best player available, like I said, but I think there's a lot of good interior options around that 43rd spot. I really think that could be a big possibility for the 49ers. Yeah, I mean, offensive line, I definitely think I could see an offensive line round two. I would think they would probably start right away at guard. And yeah. th I mean, that could tell you something about Brunskill, could tell you something about McGlinchey. I don't really know. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking. Maybe late round three with 102 could be a good option for a guy, especially like James Hudson, because I don't know what teams are thinking about him. Oh, and so, uh, someone we didn't mention yet is Kendrick Green. I think a lot of people have been talking about him. Yeah. He could be a third or fourth round pick even. Uh, so I think he'd be really great at either of those spots. Exactly. What school is he out of again? Uh, I believe Illinois, I think. Illinois. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That guy. So, I mean, yeah, the offensive line, it, I mean, you have, we talked about cornerback. We talked about receiver. We talked about offensive line, three very deep classes for that, those positions. Yeah. We're, so we're really in luck this year with a lot of guys at positions of need that, I mean, it's a deep class. You can get a lot of those guys later in the draft, early in the draft. You're going to get talent, I think, in this class. And I think this class is going to be, this could be a very pivotal class for the Niners and the Niners. I mean, hopefully we'll hit it out of the park because we definitely need to hit it out of the park this year. So definitely with you guys on that. All right, let's talk about the 49ers' favorite position on this team, edge. They always like taking defensive ends round one. 
I think you have to bring it up again. I mean, For even sure. though, even though like you have decent edges, you could definitely use some edge depth. And that's what I'm thinking. Day three, the earliest, unless a guy falls to you day two that you cannot pass up. And I think you can take some guys later on. I don't have, I haven't done that much research on edge. So I'll let Ben start this off. Have you done that much research on edge or do you want to well, pass it off to someone it, else who maybe has, it, or what do you think about that? That's kind of what, where I wanted to start. I haven't spent too much time on it, but that's not because um, I'm not, you know, I just, I think for us this year, we're not going to target edge. And quite frankly, I don't I'm think definitely with happen. you on that. Yeah. That's happen why are you sure about future. that? I, I am very <laughs> sure about that. Quitty I, three I, overall. I, I, I don't think we're going <laughs> to take someone until at least late fifth round for me, because we have those three Ooh. fifth round picks. I feel like that's a good spot. Um, but even then, I feel we could go later than that. And I don't think we're going to take someone day one or day two. Definitely not. And um, I think there's a lot of interesting guys. I know there's two Florida State edge guys that that, that are going to be in that area. There's a couple Penn State players. So there's some good players from blue chip schools who, who could be interesting. But, um, yeah, I mean, I haven't spent a ton of time on the position just because I don't think the Niners are going to be targeting that position even at those spots where I think they could get someone, I think they're going to be more targeting running backs, tight ends, you know, more uh, guys that can see playing on special teams as well. So I think, you know, that's where some of that value is going to come in late in the round. And I just, I, I don't expect this team to take edge. Interesting. Ben, uh, sorry, uh, Jesse and Eric, do you guys agree with that? I mean, I, I would say that, yeah, I, I would like to agree with that based off needs, but I mean, you never know. Uh, you know, let's say Jimmy does get traded. Maybe we can get lucky and get a second rounder out of it. Maybe we, we do take a flyer on an edge. A second round guy would be Carlos Basham Jr. I think he's an absolute stud out of uh, Wake Forest. And then you mentioned the Penn State guys, but fourth round, Shaka Tony, Penn State. I mean, he would be a nice, nice pick. And, and when I think of when this defense was firing at its best, it's when we had D Ford on one side. And we had Bosa on the other. And he reminds me a lot of D Ford. He can stand up. He can play that wide nine technique. He's a little bit lighter, but he has pass rush moves galore. He hits the gap extremely hard. Not the best in, in run defense, but listen, that's not what he's going to be brought in for. So round four, Shaka Tony would be definitely a great fit if we're looking for a D Ford replacement. Yeah, I do think the 49ers are definitely looking possibly for a D Ford replacement. I do think Ebukam can fill that hole. And I do think you did you did bring in some guys at edge that definitely helped for this team. So personally, I think one guy, or I'm going to highlight two guys. One guy's probably a round six, round seven guy. And one guy's a guy who I think could fall in this draft. I've seen him pretty low on some boards. We'll start with that guy. That's Patrick Jones out of Pitt. This dude did pretty well at the senior bowl, runs a 4-3 scheme. Him and Rashad Weaver, that could be another guy. But Patrick Jones has been the guy I've seen falling on boards. If he's there round four, I think you should take him. It's definitely worth it. I saw him mocked round one at the beginning of the year to the 49ers. So definitely interesting to see what the deal with Patrick Jones is. The other guy out of Buffalo, Malcolm Kuntz. This dude's a, I mean, he's again, a 4-3 guy. Fits our scheme really well. I think those would be two guys, two developmental guys. Really, I think Patrick Jones, you don't have to develop as much as Malcolm Kuntz. But I think it will work out really well for the 49ers with two of those guys. So I'll just name those guys for now. But if a guy, let's say a guy like Jalen Phillips, Gregory Rousseau, Carlos Basham, if they follow you at 43, I think you have to consider taking one of those guys, especially Phillips, because Phillips, in my opinion, yeah, Phillips is dude, th he is my he is one of the best at, he's one of, if not the best edge in this class. I would not be surprised. I mean, teams are saying he's the best edge. I do not he would be with that he would be a top ten pick if he didn't have that concussion issue. I mean that's Easily. a big that's a big it, it, what if. A big but from issue, a talent yeah. perspective, he's a top ten pick. He's every bit as good as guys that we've seen go in the past. Maybe not on the Bosa level, but he's he's got a little bit of everything. He's extremely good. Well, and we've certainly seen this team comfortable with uh, taking guys with injury history. So <laughs> yeah, that's not no doubt about that. If, if you want one of these injury guys. I'm excited about a couple of the guys that we've brought in in-house, right? Arden yeah. Key, I love yep. Arden Key. That I too, really yeah. liked him coming out of LSU. I think he's the, – the wide nine can really afford defensive ends to have the pass rushing advantage. So with the tools he has in a wide alignment, he can really excel with Chris Kosarek. Jordan Willis, we brought Jordan Willis back. I think he's another guy who – well, I don't think he, we've seen his potential yet. So we got a couple of in-house options. 
that I'm excited to see. Yeah, even if Ford doesn't play a snap, I feel like we've got some pretty decent depth there for sure. And at the very least, let's say Ford does play, then one of these guys is going to get kicked off the roster. So they're going to be fighting like hell to stay there. I think it's it makes for a very good dynamic. Absolutely. So Edge, I mean, yeah, you could call it need, but I mean, I think we're, I, I can say I feel like we're fairly set at it. I do think just knowing the team, we will probably take an edge. So I would probably add that to my blueprint. I do think we're probably taking edge. So yeah, that's all I got to say about edge. All right. Is there any position? I mean, I have a few more positions I kind of want to talk about, but I know we're running low on time. Is there any position in particular that you guys really want to talk about? Well, uh, I, I think one later player I want to touch on because I talked about tight ends that I really want to target for the 49ers is Briley Moore. Uh, I think he could be really awesome. And he, he he's a great guy. He, he can do everything. He can block. He can catch. And I think they're going to need that second or third tight end, depending on you, how you feel about Ross Dwelly. And I, I want extra depth at that position. You know, you look at George Kittle's injury history. Jordan Reed just retired. Um, I, I just would want to be a lot more comfortable, especially with a rookie quarterback. So Briley Moore, though, that's the guy I'm trying to target. I also love the Notre Dame tight end. But I think he's going to go higher. I feel like you can get – uh, Briley more in the fourth or fifth round. So that's, that's a guy I love. I'm definitely with you on that. I definitely think we need a pa more of a pass catching tight end, not necessarily in the blocking game, but you look at what the 49ers have. I think Dwell is good for the blocking game. Charlie Warner is a pure blocker. And I mean, Russell, I feel like plays that George kill role a bit more. I feel like we were really good with that pass catching tight end. And I'll say it again, George Kittle did have a dropping problem last year. Definitely did in my opinion. So I think yeah, you got to, just get some insurance for him. One guy, I'm going to go back to Florida State, Ben. Trey McKitty, now at Georgia, but former yeah. Florida State guy. This guy's a pure pass catcher. Probably a guy you can see round five, round six. That's what I've seen on most boards. I would love to have this guy on my team. He's an absolute beast. Watching the film, always really fun to do. So you could have him there. If we don't take a tight end, though, I wonder if that means is Jalen Hurd healthy? Are we going to move Jalen Hurd to tight end, or is that too risky to do right now? We'll have to see, but I do think taking another pass catching tight end for this team is definitely a good move. I'm definitely with you on that, Ben. Yeah, and I, I, just, I got another guy for you, Sam. Uh, mm -hmm. if, we're, if we're talking pass catching tight ends, I got a guy, Pro Wells at a TCU. Yes. He's 6'3. Yeah. He's got a big body, and I really like he's tough after the catch. This guy is fighting for yards, and we know Kyle Shanahan loves his yak guys. So he's like a yak guy at tight end. So Pro Wells at a TCU, that was a guy who I. When I was scouting some tight ends as a late as a later guy, he's a pass catching tight end I like. Pro Wells. I got another name for you. Noah Gray out of Duke. Yes, I was about to say him too. <laughs> Extremely smooth release, runs solid routes, and again, one of those guys that catches well away from his body, away from his frame. I think that he would be a great addition in the fifth or probably actually sixth round we could get him. Yeah, I've seen him mocked as low as the seventh. So that's a really yeah. late round guy that I think you could get. All, I mean, all four of those guys, I mean, you don't really need a, you just need one of those guys and I think you're good. And it can be yeah. really be any of those guys, in my opinion. So tight end, I will probably take one. I, th I think the question is who will be, but all very guys who can just guys who can get those yards after catch, catch the ball, receiving tight end. I think you can't go wrong. Yeah. at tight end at this moment definitely. so and, and one more position we definitely i think have to talk about i mentioned earlier was running back um i, I think they're going to invest in a running back on this team i think kyle wants to he's itching to so is there any guys that that you, you all have seen because i think for me i love either the unc running backs i love Travis tn e even later on i know a guy like Demetric felton is more of a receiver but i love getting any type of those guys who can do different things so so do you guys have anyone in mind well, I, I love Javante Williams. To me, when I, I see him play, I see Clinton Portis. I mean, all day long, that's exactly who, mm -hmm. who I see. I don't think we're going to go running back that early. A guy for me that we could get in round five that I think has a lot of upside is Chuba Hubbard out of Oklahoma yeah. State. Oh, yeah. Everyone's been talking patient, about him, man. Absolutely. Quick feet, fights for extra yardage. I think he would be great in our scheme, and you could probably realistically get him in round five. So – that's a guy that that I'm looking at for sure. Yeah, Chuba Hubbard, that guy is electric, but his his 40 time was a lot slower than how his tape speed. Mm -hmm. Chuba Hubbard, I really he's got great acceleration. I love Chuba Hubbard. And then that's why I think met, that's why I think yeah. he might fall because of that 40 time. The only knock that I have down for him 
is he carried the ball a lot. He has a lot of mileage, 585 mm-hmm. carries in college. That's a bit of a concern. But the 40 time, you're right. I think that's a big reason why he could drop, but he plays a lot faster for sure. Absolutely. I think one guy you can also add to this list, and this is a guy who I wouldn't have added to this list. The Arctic Keeve signing changed my mind a little bit. Puka Williams. And yeah. I mean, this dude's a beast. You have some character concerns with him. But bringing in Arden Key, who had character concerns before the draft, still, I mean, it was mainly injury concerns, but I think that definitely still affected him a lot during the draft and after the draft, too. I think that definitely still has an effect on why teams are very low on Arden Key, and he was released by the Raiders. The Niners luckily picked him up, which I think is a good signing, as Eric said earlier. But Puka Williams would be a good signing for this team. You just got to keep those character concerns. That's where he's been falling, so that could be a late-round steal. Personally, I don't think we're going to go running back I actually don't – I would not be surprised if we don't even take a running back. I actually really like the running back core that we have right now, especially with Gallman, who I'm yeah. very high on, yeah, Mostert, Gallman. Wilson. I think that's a solid trio right there. Jamichael Hasty, I was very high on last year. And then maybe just adding an undrafted free agent, and you're all good. I'm totally fine with the running back core right now. So if we don't take one, I'm cool with it. But I can definitely see a lot of people saying, oh, maybe trade up for Najee Harris, which I don't think is going to happen. I think – I think the one guy I think you could take in that in the first three rounds is Travis Etienne. That's just that's just too perfect of a fit, and that's the only guy I would probably consider taking there. So, yeah, that's all I got to say about running back. You guys got anything else about running back? No. Nope. Perfect. All right, let's move. I know we're rolling on time. Let's move to another position really quickly. Linebacker. I talked about this at the beginning. Kind of want to touch up on this. We need some linebacker depth. I'll just go through. Guys. Also, Fred Warner, no extension yet. That could be interesting. I think just getting your guy would be very important. So I'll name a few guys. Main, these are mainly day two guys. And then there's a few, well, day two, day three guys. I think that's where you'll probably see a linebacker. I'll just breeze through them real quickly. I talked about this on Cone Phone on Sunday. So I'll repeat what I said. But Nick Bolton, middle linebacker out of Missouri. This guy possesses everything you want in an NFL linebacker. Same with Dylan Moses. He has some injury concerns. He tore his pec, I believe. But it seems like he's fully recovered. So that's why his stock's falling. Chas Surratt, and then the next three guys are pretty – next next two I should, should say are similar. Chas Surratt's a three-down guy, very consistent player out of UNC. Size, a lot of people have been saying that's a concern, but in my opinion, size doesn't matter too much in the NFL, in my opinion. I know I, – I mean, it does matter a little bit, but not as much as people think. So Chas Surratt's another guy. If you want a poor man Chas Surratt, that could, you could get maybe round three and who could be maybe even better than Chas Surratt. Justin Hilliard out of Ohio State, very similar – that's a guy I really like. I would not be surprised if we take him round four, round five, maybe round six, depending on where his stock is. Last guy I'll say, a bit different from those other threes, Cameron McGrone out of Michigan. Lots of explosiveness in him. If you want an explosive linebacker, maybe you can develop a little bit. Get a guy like Cameron McGrone. So those are five linebackers I can name. If you guys want to add them to the list, feel free to. The floor is yours. Yeah, for me, I would add in Monty Rice out of Georgia. He's probably going to be a round four guy. He's very instinctive. Um, he reads and diagnoses plays extremely well. And he gets really good depth on his pass drops. So I think that he's one of those guys that you look at that Georgia defense and there's so many guys. You have LeCount, you have both the corners, you have Ojalari. I just think that he's completely overlooked. But from a, a talent perspective, I think that he's right there. He reminds me a lot of Quan Alexander from an athletic standpoint, but he plays a lot smarter than Quan does. So that's why I like Monty Rice. That's the only linebacker that I really had down as one that I would love to get in the draft. Definitely. I don't, I don't have a linebacker, but I got a safety. Should I fit him in here? Yeah, fit him in here. I think you also could see guys who could be safety linebacker hybrids. Marcel Harris could fill in that spot as well. So we can add in safety for sure. Yeah, the safety I'm looking at, the bloodlines are strong, and it's a late-round guy, Troy Warner. Troy Warner, he was a fifth-year senior. He's played quite a bit of ball over at BYU. The the interception rate wasn't great. He didn't have any picks his first four years. This past year, 2020, he had two picks, so you're seeing some more productivity. But with the Warner bloodline, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get an intelligent player who knows where to be and when to be there. So Troy Warner as a late round guy, I love it. Yeah, yeah man. I mean, a family. That's why I also love Israel Mukuamu. Family. Oh, no, not Israel Mukuamu. If Fado Melifonu, Obi Melifonu is on this team as well. So that could be definitely something interesting to see. 
Yeah, yeah, they have Troy Warner is going undrafted. That's kind of crazy to me. That is crazy to me. There's no way he's going to get drafted. That's a oh for sure. People, if he's like like, six or seven, that's a you definitely got to do it to make Fred happy. Oh, for sure, that's a no brainer. Oh, absolutely. And if you're having trouble extending him, maybe you just add him. Why not, dude? Exactly, exactly. You you see what the uh, if we're doing a little crossover, think outside the box, box, man. That's what you got to do. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But uh, yeah, if you look at like I said, just. You know, Bucks, they, they signed Giannis's younger brother or older brother, I think. So, yep. hey, go for it, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. But I, I think for me, there aren't any linebackers I want to target specifically. I do love some of those safety linebacker hybrid guys that that uh, Bay Area Baller mentioned. I also love there's an FSU safety linebacker hybrid, Nazar Dean. He's really good. I like him. Um, and, and I think just overall, I, I want them to attack this defense a little bit more and, and just get – um our, our new defensive coordinator D'Amico Ryan's a lot of help um he's going to need it this year you know while, while the team was able to produce with Nick Bosa off the field they're going to need to add depth whether it's at safety or linebacker and especially at these other positions we mentioned but I think you could argue almost any position for this team they need to upgrade their depth I think that's one of the most important things that we need to do um just with this draft in general Absolutely. And depth is going to be the key to this draft. I mean, as a Warriors fan, you got the strength and numbers motto. That's really going in with the 49ers here. I think, I mean, all the positions we talked about, yeah, our starters are set. They're all, it's all about depth besides the quarterback position. We didn't even talk about quarterback because there wasn't even a need to, because we don't really need one. You're getting one round one. We don't need to talk about who it is. Actually, yes, we do. Just, (laughs) just give me one word on who it is. You don't need to say why. Let's just talk about your final prediction for quarterback, and that will end the stream. Unless, actually, before that, do you guys have any other players you want to talk about? Any other positions? So I'm I got, to I got two more players that I want to talk about. Let's do it. Um, just because we tend to get some really good defensive tackles late in the draft, some round six guys that I like are Jonathan Marshall out of Arkansas, six foot three, three hundred eleven pounds. He played out of position. They had him as a nose tackle. That is definitely not what he should be playing. He's not a three four lineman he needs to be in that four three so i think that he would be extremely solid and of that same vein another guy that plays very similar to him but is is a little bit bigger is Tadaro slayton out of florida six foot four 330 again not a nose tackle despite the size both of these guys remind me a lot of dj jones of, of just being big bodies that can get up field and actually wreak havoc on early down passing plays so those are two guys that I like just because I don't expect Jones to be here past this season, quite frankly. So Ben, Eric, any other guys you want to talk about? I've nailed my whole board, Sam. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm comfortable with everyone I covered too. I think just one thing I want to mention real quick before we get into this last thing is that uh, I think this team is going to fill one of these positions. We've been spending a lot of time talking about when they trade Jimmy Garoppolo, because there's going to be that huge oh, cap sure. space. And I think, you know, no matter what position that is, I think the Niners are going to have an opportunity to, to get a superstar potentially, or even get two starters. If you look at the kind of money that they're giving up, you know, spot track tweeted out, I think this morning that if you trade Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, the money you would save, you could pay for Julio Jones and the entire rookie class. So I would be very happy with that personally. Yeah. But, you know, just I mean, who all, would, man? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I'm just saying we got to keep that in mind. You know, uh, we mm-hmm. see all these guys, these free agents are going to come up, uh, these post June one guys. The Niners are going to be one of those teams that can take advantage of that with Jimmy. So to me, that's one of the more important things heading into the rest of this offseason. Absolutely. Exactly. Definitely with you on that. And before we end the stream, as I said earlier, I was getting a bit ahead of, my, a bit ahead of myself. Everyone, give me your prediction for who the pick is at three. Bay, go ahead. Hey, Sam. First, I want to say thanks for having me. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, man. This was a blast, man. Great having all of you guys. This is a, this is a really good crew. I really like this crew right here. Definitely a great crew to have on. Heck yeah. And who I think we're going to draft is different than who I want. And this is who I've been on really for a long time. I mean, going back in January, I had a cone phone where I told Grant, I said, hey, this quarterback from Alabama, Mac Jones, Kyle Shanahan's going to like him. He's like Kirk Cousins. That's what I was seeing. And it really, it hasn't wavered till this day. I think the pick is going to be Mac Jones. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, not popular, I, but I feel it. Go ahead. I, I want to say, first of all, yeah, thank you, Sam. This is a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. We, Absolutely, we all have man. to get together to, uh, again and talk soon. This is a lot of fun. But um, 
if you're making me choose, I, I think, first of all, I just want to say, I think the thing I loved about this regime, and maybe it's a little bit hard as a fan, but, you know, looking into the future, I'm happy that no one knows who we're taking right now, because I don't think anyone is confident one way or the other. And I think you look at us versus a team like the Jets, I don't understand why the Jets are so open with who their decision is at quarterback, if that is their decision, even though I'm hoping it isn't. But for saying that uh, Zach Wilson's going number two, I, I have to say I think it's going to be Trey Lance. And, and I've really gone back and forth between Trey Lance and Mac Jones. To me right now, it's a matter of flipping a coin and just what I, what I feel that hour, not even what day. It, it changes constantly. But for me, I think um, they're going to get Kyle to buy in enough to Trey Lance. And the rest of the uh, front office and organization seems to be behind that type of pick. So to me, that's what makes sense. If they can get Kyle over the edge with Trey Lance saying, look, we know you love Mac Jones, but are you okay with Trey Lance? And if he's okay with Trey Lance, you're making that decision. But to me, uh, I'm still leaving that 5% of hope that Zach Wilson somehow is there at pick number three. Um, But, hey, if he's not Trey Lance, not a bad option either. (laughs) No doubt. Jesse, what about you? Yeah, just to echo what you guys said, I love it when when this crew can get together. I know that Ben and Bay said that they're in for Tuesday. What about you? Are you going to be in for Tuesday on my channel? Or I'm still figuring. I need a okay. time to come out for this one thing that I got, but I'm okay. really hoping to be on. But guys, if I'm not, whether I'm on or not, you got to check that out next Tuesday. I believe it's at seven. What time did you say again? Yeah, I'll get the time. I think I wanted we'll to say it, it was at seven, seven o'clock Pacific, 10 Eastern. Pacific. I'm pretty sure. We'll figure yeah. it out. But anyways, next Tuesday, whether I'm on that stream, you got to check out Last Second Sports. We're going to be on. These three are going to be on. Hopefully, I'll be on. We'll figure it out. But Jesse, anyways, who you got for quarterback? I'm going to go with Lance. That's who I, I mocked last night in the final mock. Uh, I just think that Lance is going to be the pick. I, I just don't see how you trade up to three. You take the major gamble that you take and then get there and start to play it safe to try to hold on to your final 10% of your chips because you don't see the cards play out the way that you want. It absolutely has to be one of the guys with high upside, and I think that Lance is the guy. I think that he sold them during this whole draft process, them meeting his family, them having Zoom calls throughout the whole process. I just, I think, I think he's the guy. So Lance is who I'm going with. Who are you picking? I'm also going Lance. And I think, I, I mean, I tweeted this out earlier. You want a lot of guy with upside. You're, Always, I mean, you swung for the fences already. Why stop now? Just swing yep. for the fences all the way. Go for the Grand Slam. And I think if you want that Grand Slam, you go with Trey Lance. And by the way, if you take Trey Lance, that floor is going to be higher than most people have him as. So yeah. I definitely think that's – and he's, by the way, I do have him higher than Justin Fields on my board. So I would not be surprised if – I mean, Trey Lance, I would love that pick. I think Fields yeah. could very much happen. Same with Mac Jones, unfortunately, but – I'm hoping Lance. Oh, I think yeah. it's going to be Lance. Well, so, I hope you're right. I hope uh, you're right, Sam. <laughs> yes, sir. And, and I think there you can rule out any of these guys. And hey, you know, if we're looking at it this way, who's going to wear number ten? That's going to be a problem if you take Mac Jones. So, um, <laughs> I, got, I need. I need to get the duct tape out. Put it on the back of the jersey. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can get the uh, n- number ten McCorkle. You know, that's, did, that's McCorkle, what I'm going to be going you go. for. <laughs> yeah, I did that with. I have a black jersey in there. <laughs> Once a Ruben Foster jersey, and now a Quan Alexander jersey, and now it's just like <laughs> we're figuring it out. But the duct tape will be out on this jersey. Thank you, Jimmy G, for your services. Best of luck wherever you are. But, guys, that's going to do it. Great stream tonight. And there's our blueprints for the draft, rounds two through seven, with our final takes on quarterback. But that's going to do it. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Go Niners!